Okay, now that Dr. Cleveland's got his uh, first layer of PPE on, we're gonna come through and do the second layer of, uh, of PPE. And this is actually the point where we would start to apply the respirator. Again, I wanna make it really clear that the uh, Ebola virus is not airborne. Um, the reason we've chosen this gear is because it's very, very protective from liquid hazards as well. What's back here is a little battery pack with an air pressure, uh, with an air pressurization system. It pulls air through a HEPA filter. So that's a particulate filter of, of a much smaller micron level than, than we are worried about with Ebola virus. You'll see the protective hood that we're putting on Dr. Cleveland has two levels, the inner level and the outer level. And that's why we've got three layers of liquid protection on the upper torso. And we're gonna stretch down the inner layer so that the next gown can cover over the inner layer and then we'll droop the outer layer above it. And we're connecting the air hose into an opening towards the back of the head. We want Dr. Cleveland to stay in the patient room as long as possible. And just having a mask or having a full biohazard suit gets very, very hot. This suit actually is blowing a stream of air down across his face. So it's also got some cooling effect as well as being protective. So this is gonna be the outer layer. So when we were saying that we had three layers of protection, the outer layer is this, then we have a gown layer, then we have the inner layer, that's the third level of protection. But under that, he actually has yet another gown. So on his torso, it's four layers. Um, below his torso, it's three layers of liquid impervious. So the very last step is to put on what we consider his skin layer of gloves. These gloves are very, very thick. They kind of remind you of dish gloves. And you'll see that even though he's got two layers of surgical gown, we're gonna put this cuff on the outside and tape it down to make sure that no gaps appear. And the purpose of that is so that when we take this outer layer off, the gloves come with it rather than having to take the gloves off separately. We never wanna have the care provider actually expose their skin in the room. So what we're doing is we're putting two layers of gloves for his protection. This layer of gloves is actually for the patient protection. So what this allows is for the care provider to put on gloves if they were gonna do some sort of uh, an action that's dirty. They can still take off their gloves and then put on a new pair of clean gloves so that they're not contaminating from within the patient room. Dr. Cleveland is now ready to walk in and treat the suspect Ebola case while we're waiting for state and county public health departments as well as the legacy response team to be deployed to rule out the case, decide to transfer the case or, or make decisions from there out. Our interest is to get them operational but highly protected as soon as possible so that they can isolate the patient but provide patient care as soon as possible while the rest of the team mounts and, and sets up a larger response.